In this video, we're going to talk about Zen and the fact that it is now on five chains. Okay, guys, I want to ask the question, what do you think? Do you think Jack Levin has ruined Zen by not just keeping it limited to the Ethereum network? We're going to go over that in this video, so stay tuned. It's Crypto Lightsaber back with another video, guys. Let's talk about Zen network. Uh, sorry, Zen Crypto, not Zen network. Zen Crypto which is on the Ethereum network now, including the Binance Smart Chain, Polygon, Avalanche, and Ethereum proof of work, as you can see tweeted here from Zen Zoo, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. We are on the Jack Levin uh, Twitter page, of course, and as you can see, it is on the five chains that we've mentioned here. Okay, guys, I have minted on Ethereum, I've minted on the Binance Smart Chain, and I've also minted on the Polygon network, I didn't go ahead and do the Avalanche or the proof of work, fear and proof of work. But um, yeah, I mean, I've got, you know, mixed feelings about it. Personally, I think it probably would have been better just to leave it on the Ethereum network. We talk about people actually buying into the token. We're talking about the long-term potential of the success of the token, right? I was pretty hyped with the Zen Ethereum network launch, even though it dumped all the way down when it got on MEXC. You know, the fact that we're minting millions of these tokens over a period of time, I thought, you know, maybe this can come back over time. And we are seeing some volume coming in. We're seeing little mini pumps, but I just wonder in the long term how this is going to do. Only because um, when you look at the tokens, right, it's not even like it's cross-chain because the the new mints are basically limited to those networks. So it's not like you can create a bridge and kind of, I mean, not, uh, unless the prices all kind of merge together and synchronize, right? It's, you know, it'd be too much in terms of arbitrage. Because for example, if we look at Zen, the Ethereum Zen, right? You can see that the price is 0 0.00007916, okay? And then you go to the Binance Smart Chain version, which is called BZEN, which is also now on MEXC Exchange. Let's just uh, close that. You can see that the price is completely different. Okay, guys, there's actually an extra zero on there as well. So uh, you can see like two completely different tokens. Okay, one being ZEN, the other being BZEN. Um, I'm not sure whether there's going to be a PZEN. Is it PZEN? Um, or AZEN? For Avalanche, for example, right? What are they going to call those ones? I don't know because I didn't mint those ones. Uh, the Polygon Zen, what would they call it? M Zen, maybe? I know it's going to get on Pulse Chain. Oh, yeah, right. We've got M Zen, right? I haven't even checked this. So, M Zen, completely different price. We know it's going to be on Pulse Chain eventually. It's on Ethereum Proof of Work. It's on the Avalanche Network. I just think it's a little bit too much, personally. I would, I would much rather see just an Ethereum Network Zen. But I want you guys to let me know what you think in the comments. I didn't actually cover uh, the fact that I did mint the BSC version. When I did my last video, I wasn't aware that it was going to happen so soon. And, um, you know, when this happened, right, BSC got congested, just like Ethereum got congested, the Polygon network got congested. And it's clear to see that there is a huge community behind this project in particular. We're on the BSC version right now um let's just have a look at the active minters nine hundred and four thousand active minters guys that is crazy global rank right now is 2.2 million so in terms of user base huge success okay guys in terms of price you could argue of course that this is a free mint token no expectation of profit and all that sort of stuff it's an experiment and things like that but you know, regardless of whether it's an experiment or anything like that, when it comes to cryptocurrency, a lot of people are in this not for the technology. We're in it for the gains, right? We want to make gains. Okay, guys. Now, of course, if you kind of add up the amount of Zen that you've got, uh, you know, and compare it to the gas prices that you paid, you're probably going to be making a profit once it's all said and done, uh, especially if the prices pump in the long term. But uh, ultimately, I think it's probably going to lose some of the hype that it had in the beginning just for the simple fact that it's not limited to one chain. People are kind of like taking their pick at the moment, right? If you don't like Ethereum gas fees and things like that, 
Um, they're they're going to go to the Binance Smart Chain version or the Avalanche version, for example. Of course, when it comes to uh, user base, the Binance Smart Chain is huge. Ethereum network is huge, bigger than Avalanche, bigger than Polygon, bigger than um, Ethereum Power and so on. All right, guys. So I think it would have been better just to limit it to those chains. Uh, but that's just my opinion. You'll have to let me know what you think in the comments. Um, in terms of the minting, I managed to get some pretty good C ranks on the Binance Smart Chain. Um, like I said, I think it's going to lose some of the hype. And it's definitely lost some of the hype with me moving it onto all these different chains. And it's not even the fact that it's on all these different chains. It's probably more so the fact that it's a completely different token, right? It's different smart contract. Uh, probably same tokenomics, of course, but different smart contract, different network. Okay, guys. So for me, that's taken away some of the hype, some of the uh, long-term bullishness that I expected for this project and um you know there, there'll probably be people out there who say i told you so uh you know they weren't bullish on this in the first place but you can't really go wrong with free coins minus your gas fees okay guys so for me at the end of the day i don't regret obviously participating with the contract and still this is my short-term view right we don't know what can happen long term um but i will be keeping my eye on it of course and i, I probably will talk about it again because there's probably going to be other things coming along the line right we don't know what kind of utility there's going to be down the line we know at the moment there is staking okay i got a huge amount uh, when i minted on the polygon network and what i did on polygon i just did i, I just did big stakes right or, or mints sorry i did uh, uh long ones okay guys because I, i'm not as active on the polygon network although i do use it every single day um i just thought you know i've been doing this on all different wallets let me just go and do it on every network more or less okay apart from apart from the ones that i haven't done might as well do it if, if i've got gas on there already like i had gas already on polygon so i thought why not you know it will cost me a couple of matic probably didn't cost me more than two matic altogether probably less than that to do the mints so uh in terms of what it cost me on the ethereum network a lot less that was when most of hype was it launched on there first um i spent probably 200 dollars minting on the ethereum network so you know now i'm faced with the dilemma that when i actually claim my stakes which i believe that my first one will be claimed sometime tomorrow do I hold on to it or do I sell it? Okay, guys. With the amount I'm claiming tomorrow on a seven-day mint, I don't think it's worth selling. It's probably worth holding on to it. Especially, like I said, we are getting these mini pumps. Okay, guys. And I believe that, you know, seeing this price action gives you some positive hope, right? That, you know, this can pump, right? So we never know what it's going to do. And um, being a fact is in low, low in liquidity as well, if it does kind of get going and Jack Levin pulls something out the woodwork and just makes this go absolutely nuts, we could still be sitting on huge profits later on down the line as long as the liquidity is there to support, you know, uh, uh, your transaction to sell, right? So I just wanted to cover that, guys. I want you to let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, so please go ahead. Uh, there was something else that I wanted to talk about very briefly. Um, and there is an article from Coin Telegraph. Zen proof of participation protocol validates Ethereum merge move. So Zen is pretty bullish for Ethereum as a whole. I would say that. And it's bringing a lot of attention to Ethereum. Uh, but yeah, like I said, launching on the other chains and so on. Um, I think buying that smart chain probably makes sense for the, you know, the fact that it's, you know, hugely adopted. But um, yeah, I don't know. It's just my opinion, guys. I thought I'd make a video and cover that. Like I said, let me know what you think in the comments. I'm going to end the video there, guys. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Tick the little bell for notifications. If you like the video, that helps with the YouTube algorithm. YouTube will begin to recommend my content to people who may not have seen it otherwise. Guys, that's the end of the video. I'll see you in the very next one.